Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Reach More podcast. We're so excited to be able to kind of debrief the past episode with Megan from Elon University. It was a joy to just have her here representing the college students and just seeing all the different ways the Lord is working through her and in her and on college campuses, which I think we don't talk about enough. And so I don't know about you, Dan, but for me, it was just such a gift to just kind of see all that's got going on at Elon and universities everywhere. Yeah, no, I I love that. That's those are the stories I want to tell more of. And uh, yeah. I I'm just so happy that she's had a good time with her apostolate. You know, and I was like, did you encounter any difficulty? She was like, no, not really. It's like good. That's exactly what I want to hear with people. Like, I don't want there to be any difficulty. I want the leadership yeah. to say, you're ready, go do it. Let me know if you have any mm -hmm. problems. And then to mm -hmm. go experience the fruit. Mm -hmm. That is what happens when mission is aligned and people get it. They're like, okay, th this yep. is your job as a baptized Catholic. I'm going to let you do it. That it just made mm -hmm. me happy. Yeah, it is awesome. And, you know, I worked with that university and the team really is, there's just so big on training you, training the students to do not only their own apostolates, but know how to do one-on-ones, know how to go up to people in different, like different groups, whether it's athletes or sororities or fraternities like whatever it is they're interested in how can we bring god into it which is kind of cool to hear her kind of share that that was one of the things that impacted me just yeah like she had to she goes it was easy to say like what are you involved in campus ministry but what do you say after that and that follow-up is right. going to be really important so yeah, just super yeah. proud of that the the imposter syndrome thing is something that i think we can't uh well not that we would ignore it i don't want to ignore that right because um, I've heard that so many times, just time after time, I'm not ready or yeah. I don't have what it takes. And it's, okay. it's like never true. Like, I don't think of a time where anybody's thought that about well, living their baptismal call where it's not true. Yeah. I was going to say that because I was, as she was saying it, I thought, I think this has been said in almost every one of our podcasts to some extent, right? Like, yeah, I don't feel ready or I didn't think it was going to happen or why me? And I think there's like a twofold to that, right? Like one, there's peace in knowing that like, we're never going to be a hundred percent ready because like, because we're not, but like the Lord is the one working and the Lord is the one equipping and like the Lord has given each of us gifts yeah. to put them into action and to take action. And the things that he's doing through Megan, he's not going to do the same way through another person because everyone's different, but like, just the confidence when you recognize this is what I'm thinking. This is a lie. I belong to the Lord. The Lord equips me. I'm going to move. And that's something that I think we have to continue telling ourselves. It's not just like, oh, you start the apostolate and then it's over. She said it at the end, right? She said, and I'm still struggling with the imposter syndrome. Yeah. And yeah. to some extent, I think, I mean, I don't know about you. I still struggle with it as a, as a, consultant as a speaker as a catholic yeah. at all levels right yeah, like yeah lord are you sure like i don't know if i can do this like and to recognize okay again what is the truth in this lord you're the one working lord you're the one calling me i just have to say yes yeah you know when when she specifically when she said i don't feel like i'm ready um or maybe i'm, <laughs> I'm not prepared or equipped I remember a story I heard from Focus, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, and they used to have a very famous Catholic um, kind of teacher, speaker, leader um, teach their summer courses for Bible studies to equip kids. Mm -hmm. And they noticed that the, the number of missionaries who were leading Bible studies went down and they, they stepped back and they said, well, that's funny. Like we have the best of the mm -hmm. best teaching our missionaries how to lead Bible studies, but it's not happening. And they realized, oh, they're intimidated because they don't know as much as him. And so they actually switched and they they stopped bringing in that guy and they just had their staff teach people how to run Bible studies to show them like, you don't need to be like this well-known Catholic person who's who's awesome, right? He's a, there's nothing wrong with that guy at all. Uh, but it, it's this reality that, um, God gives us what we need, right? We And Pope Francis speaks about this in The Joy of the Gospel. I think he, say, he says something like, we don't need extensive training to be able to share the love of God and what he's done with us, what he's done mm -hmm. for us with other people. And so uh, I think that's the, uh, like one of the takeaways is that yeah. reminder from Pope Francis, 
Like we don't need extensive training. Like if you've done reach more, that's enough, more than enough yep. to be able to do this. Yep. And that's the cool thing, especially looking at college campuses. And we're talking to the leadership team and like, I mean, they can run small groups, but the ways that people are going to respond to another peer leading a small group is way different than the campus minister or someone yep. that's like in another stage of life. Right. And so yeah. by equipping students to go out and, you know, invite people, she, you know, she just meets in her living room <laughs> once a week. Yeah. So like that is way less intimidating and way more relatable. And she's able to reach students that the leadership team wouldn't be able to reach in the same way, right? And mm -hmm. so to be able to recognize that is just such a big thing. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, um, for her leadership, they did a great job of being able to say, I don't have to be the star of the show. So whoever's doing campus ministry at Elon, bravo, that you were able to mm -hmm. say, hey, this 21 or 22 year old who doesn't have as, as much experience as me, who probably hasn't learned as much as me, she's ready and I'm gonna let her do this because the Lord is calling her to. And um, we might think like, oh, well, you know, somebody who's got more, more experience, more degrees or whatever, they might do a better job. No, the person that God wants to do it will do a better job and God wants her to do it. So that's what needs to happen. And I mean, she said it like, I think one of the questions you asked her was, well, what, how are you relating to people or what's something she's like, all of us have issues. All of us are stressed. <laughs> mm -hmm. All of it, you know, so like she's able, she knows that because she's in it. And, yeah. and that is a, a big thing. And for her to recognize, like, I'm always going to want an apostolate. And I think it's because we always want community and we always want people to relate to that yeah. are in similar things. Like when she leaves, she's probably, she could do a women's group for sure, but it's not probably not, it's not going to be with college students anymore because that's not her state of life anymore. Right. So yeah. just to be able to, to follow that and to recognize that I think is also a really beautiful thing. Yeah. I really like how ready she is to hand off her ministry as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like when I was like, oh, what's your succession plan? She's like, oh, I already know. Like I already practiced this. I already was gone for six months. So, yeah. you know, there's people who are just going to take yeah. it over for me. And that tells mm -hmm. you her ministry, her apostolate is not about herself. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. she did not create it for her own ego because she's yeah. ready to leave it whenever her time's up there. Yeah. Yep. And I think it was cool. I, I, I knew she had gone to study abroad. And I remember she was like, just ask someone, other people to kind of do it for a little bit. And they did. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. There you so go. So just the, like detachment, which I personally struggle with, if we're being completely honest, because I, oh, I struggle yeah. with control and I struggle with like, I want things to be my, done my way. And like, if I'm the one that started it, you know, you have an idea of how it should run. But again, yeah. if, if you really are caring about the mission, then if they want to do another resource than the one that she's using, then it's totally fine, right? Like yeah. whatever it is, as long as the purpose of community and accountability and bringing women to know the Lord and to know who they are in him, like, it's great. Yeah. The, she's resourceful too, right? She's like, well, I, you know, I just watch a bunch of videos to get ready yeah. for the next session. <laughs> that was great I mean, not for anything and i know i'm a little biased here but because you know attention but i mean th there are a lot of resources on just youtube i mean there's yeah of course you know ec has their small group resource guides which are awesome and we have podcasts like this which are awesome but i know people that are doing full-on groups through youtube's videos through 100 yeah. presents through the chosen series Right, yeah. like people are doing stuff through that, through podcasts. A lot of people, women, are using a lot of like abiding together and doing things to follow up. Like it is the resources the Catholic Church has available now, and you said it; it's very different than when we were in college. Right, so many options, uh, especially for college students, and and how can we kind of tap into that and relate to that to a big way? Yeah. yeah. So, and of course, the classic book studies are still great. So let's just not. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. those are 
but it really does knock them out. But (laughs) yeah, it's easier, right? Like it's so much easier to listen to a podcast than to read a book. And um, like, there's a, there's something about books that I still love and will always love, right? They're, Mm -hmm. they're usually a little more polished. The authors have thought through and wrestled with their ideas as they're writing them out, but it just takes longer to consume. And um, a podcast is very easy. Not only that, but she said it, her women session, her women group is, is open. Mm-hmm. So every week is different. So if you do a book study, that's not very inviting to new people. That's a great point. Yeah. If, if they didn't like read it or don't have the book, they're going to feel outcasted a little bit. You don't want that. But if yeah. you do it on a different video or a different thing, then someone can just show up and automatically feel welcome and not feel like, oh, this is their thing. And I'm just on the sidelines. Yeah, that's that's genius. Megan, if you're listening to this, great job doing that because it really does. Like yeah. it, you can get on or off at any time and, and you're not going to feel like mm-hmm. you're missing out. And when you come back mm-hmm. the next time, right? It's like, oh, I didn't really miss anything. You know, I missed one week. Okay. But now it's a complete, it's another topic. No big deal. Yep. And you can, you can adapt it to what the women are saying in your group. So like one of my favorite apostolates, which is so simple it's every week a different person brings a passage that's speaking to their hearts. That's super. I mean, you get to hear what they're thinking, you get to hear what they're saying. It's changeable. There's not, and it's always scripture. It's like a win, 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 you know, yeah. but it is important to kind of keep in mind, like who, what kind of group am I wanting and correlate to that? So. Well, and there we go. Friends. I think we need men's groups. Oh, I think yeah. we have something like there's a women's group. I, I have almost, I almost asked this and I forgot. I was like, well, who's going to lead a men's group? But I know that there are men on that campus that can do it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, Dan, I mean, I'm not a man you are, but <laughs> I think men's group are also equally important. Men's groups are great. I've loved every men's group I've ever been a part of. And they like just the, the brotherhood, the camaraderie is so much fun and it's, uh, it's vital. I've loved every one of them. And I have, I've been transformed by all, all the guys who are involved, I think would say the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm with you. So that's your homework, Marty. You can just talk with one of the guys there at Elon and be like, okay, men's group time. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple that I think would do a really good job. There's, there's good things going on in that campus. I think they can. Yeah, yeah. I bet Megan, Megan could pull it off. Let's ask Megan to yeah. like challenge one of the men. Be like, hey, look. Here's how long I've been doing the women's group. What's up? And you're not doing anything yet. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be uh, maybe they are. I don't know. I guess you would know. They are, they do have they do have stuff. I know yeah, they have yeah. stuff. I just don't know if it's an all men's group specifically. Gotcha. That's the okay. I'm not sure of. Yeah. Right. Well, that was a good list of, of uh, topics from Megan's Apostolate. So we covered imposter syndrome. We covered um just the like the what happens when you let people do what god has asked them to do and finding the right resources and uh, having a a succession plan ready to go so those are four things that i think we can all take with us and in in general on college campuses this is why i really like ec for college campuses because you're training them to be an apostle and that stays after yeah so like the importance of like equipping students um, I think sometimes I, adults or parents are like, no, we would try to force things on kids. And it's like, well, the, actually the biggest impact a student is going to have is going to be from another student. And so just mm-hmm. to be able to empower our college students and high school students, you know, to, to really understand like, Hey, the Lord is calling you. The Lord has given and give you gifts. The Lord wants to do incredible things through you. I, I want to train you to do it. And then I want to really support you in sending you out. Like she had great support from her leaders. Imagine if, if we took the time to really encourage our students in college campuses to like in high school, whatever, to, to go and implement these things. That'd yeah. be huge. It really is yeah. such a perfect training ground for that because it's, it's mm-hmm. low stakes. Like it's normal to just ask people what they're involved in. Cause you know, people, you know, they, like they're there in part to get experiences and join different groups and 
um, and build their resume. So it's such an easy part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, friends, we hope that this helped you with your apostolate. And if you haven't started one yet, maybe this helps you figure out what you want to do. Maybe it's a men's or a women's group. And uh, if you are struggling with imposter syndrome, hopefully Maddie's or Megan's example uh, encouraged you to say, you know what? The Lord has given me what I need. I'm just going to go. Well, good luck. God bless you in your apostolates this week. And we look forward to being back with you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of the Reach More podcast. I hope that it inspires you to not let the lies in, to know you, who you are, to know that the Lord is calling you to be bold and to go out. The Lord has incredible things to do through you specifically if we simply just say yes to Him. Have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next time.